From the Boston Tea Party, to anti-war demonstrations, to the Civil Rights March, the U.S. has always been home to citizens willing to fight for their rights. Native Americans have been no strangers to protests and have also initiated demonstrations to bring attention to injustice. Recently, the protest at Standing Rock has been prevalent in the news and on social media. Tribes have come together to fight construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline near the Standing Rock Sioux Tribes Reservation in North Dakota. The original project was supposed to run north of Bismarck, North Dakota, and for a variety of reasons, including water, they moved it. And when they moved it, they moved it to just north of the reservation line in Standing Rock. And what that action did was to say Indian people are expendable when the city of Bismarck is not. It's a classic case of environmental racism. As word spread, the protest grew quickly. People started coming to the camps, the tribal chairman got arrested, and then suddenly Standing Rock became a moment where hundreds, hundreds of people from across Indian country felt this call to go, to be there, to say they're with the people of Standing Rock. We're strong. Yeah. We're strong. <laughs> the Santee and his band of Shumash Indians passed a resolution in support of the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe. In addition, a few members of the Santee and his Shumash tribal community traveled to Standing Rock to join in a peaceful show of resistance. From the very beginning, the organizers at Standing Rock committed to extraordinary steps to be peaceful. There was a real recognition that the only way to win was with moral authority, not with force. Native voices were also part of the Women's March on Washington on January 21, 2017, when more than one million people traveled to Washington, D.C. to stand together in solidarity for the protection of rights. Among those marching were a group of women from the Santinez Band of Shumash Indians. I went with six women from my family, including my mom. It was a really historic moment that we could share together. To see every nationality, to see every color, to see every religion really unite together in a peaceful protest was pretty remarkable especially to see so much love and to feel it when it feels like the country is divided so much. I was super unhappy with the election results and I needed to go and make my voice heard and help other people make their voice heard. It didn't matter if you were white, black, Mexican, Native American or gay, straight, whatever you were, we all want the same thing at the end of the day. We all want equality, we all want to be happy. Back in 2012, the Santinez Band of Shumash Indians staged its own demonstration during a Santa Barbara County Board of Supervisors hearing. The Bureau of Indian Affairs had approved placing into trust 6.9 acres of land the tribe had purchased, making it part of the tribe's reservation. Local anti-tribal groups had been pressuring the board to file an appeal of that decision. There was a feeling of frustration that we were continuously having to make our plea that we should be able to acquire ancestral land, add it back to our reservation, and that we are a tribal government and we should be treated as such. There was a huge show of support at the meeting. We had over 400 people show up. The thing that stands out was being able to see my grandmother in the front row, but also hearing from our tribal community, our tribal elders, and our then chairman, Vince Armenta. Our tribe is here. We have always been here. We will not be ignored. Our voices will not be ignored. After more than two hours of public comments, the tribe prevailed as the board voted against appealing the BIA's decision, and in 2014, the land was officially placed into federal trust. Today, the tribe is working on plans to build a museum on the property. But as the Santee Inez Shumash and other tribes continue to face opposition to their advancement, the Native American community must stay vigilant in making their voices heard. There's other people out there who can't fight for what they need. They're just not able to. But I am, and I can go out there and say, I don't like that, that's unfair, and I can help change it. The bottom line is that this country cannot be the country it wants to be, that it proclaims to be, unless its first people are part of the conversation. The great principles that are outlined in the Constitution and the Declaration are aspirational, but it needs to have indigenous voices to make it so. And it needs to actually have those voices listened to. And we won't win every time, but we'll have a say in those things. And that's what's important.